So today I'm going to be giving you a little overview on Dark Rebel by John Barbados. Just the original Dark Rebel, not Dark Rebel Rider. And one of the reasons why I'm going to go ahead and cover this one is that uh, if you don't know this now, you will know it is a discontinued fragrance, one that you still can pick up, but I have been watching and unfortunately the prices are starting to continue to rise or they have been rising and they're, they're getting to the point now where this is probably going to be about your last chance to comfortably buy a backup bottle or a bottle for the first time. Uh, currently the cheapest I'm seeing is FragranceNet, 2.5 ounce for $60 and it's only going to continue to go higher until it goes out of stock. And once it goes out of stock, if they are to get more in, I have a feeling it's probably going to be uh, north of 100. And it's really kind of sad for me to see because these are fragrances I got into kind of when I was newer, and they offer great value, great bang for your buck. You know, for someone that couldn't afford a lot at that time, it was just fragrances that I could get and smell you know a high quality unique scent without spending a bunch of money so it's actually sad to see this one dwindling away so if you want to get one i would act now i will drop the link down below also the fragrance net 35 percent off link will be down there make sure you click that in order to get this one for the lowest possible price i'm going to be reviewing this one I'm going to tell you how it smells how it performs when you can wear it and ultimately we will be saying goodbye to a great discontinued fragrance. So let's start off with how this one smells. Now when you first spray it on, you get this nice sugary rum sweetness up top. It smells fantastic. And you're probably thinking, okay, how do you smell sugar? Like what does sugar smell like? Uh, and this is one where you gotta actually try it for yourself to see when you do spray it on, it does have this nice sweetness, this sugary sweetness. So there's the rum, there's some leather, there's some tobacco, but it's all sweetened up much more. It smells fantastic. It's masculine, it's strong, it's assertive, it's very sexy, very mysterious. And you will also notice right away that the quality is incredibly smooth. Let's go ahead and take a look at the note breakdown here. Up top we have rum, sugarcane, cardamom, clary sage, and another note, artemisia, that I never know how to say. I was dreading that. Hopefully I nailed it right. In the mid we have leather, fur resin, pepper, styrax. In the base, we have tobacco leaf, woody notes, castorium, acagala wood, Mexican vanilla, and juniper. So uh, a lot of these John Barbados fragrances will have big note breakdowns. I do think a Dark Rebel Rider has even more notes than this one does. And again, this was also something that you don't normally see in fragrances that at one point were at, you know, $30, $40 for 100 mil. So it, you know, they were just great value back then and now they're just going away. So of those notes, what do I pick up on the most? Well, I already listed off a few there, the rum, the sugar cane, the leather up top. You do get some of that tobacco, but it's not super strong. You'll also notice that's a tobacco leaf. So it's more of like a aromatic tobacco smell rather than like a strong red pipe tobacco. So it's more uh, more subdued here, it's more mild. You do get some of that vanilla that comes through more in the dry down, a little bit of cardamom up top, but not all that much either. So don't get your hopes up about that. Uh, the fur resin, that also comes through. That kind of gives it this resinous, kind of woody, masculine, earthy smell that's underneath all of the sweetness. You get just a good amount of woods in here as well, giving it a nice base. Uh, the castorium is something that I really don't pick up on, so don't let that scare you off thinking that's gonna be super animalic or something. It's really not. Uh, it, it's relatively mild and subdued. I'll just go ahead and get this one on skin here real quick, and uh, we'll kind of play with it as we go. But man, that opening is just amazing you do get this richness this woodiness this rugged leathery masculine sugary smell actually now that i think about it maybe i do pick up on a little bit of the castorium just a little bit giving it a little bit more of a, a richness more of a kind of animalic leathery smell they're kind of going hand in hand smoky woody holy crap i mean this is just it, it really sucks that it's going away. Because I think this is something that I appreciate now more than I did when I first got it, when I was first starting out. I know that I really liked it when I first got it. But now that I've smelled many other things, you know, I pick up on these other nuances, these other facets. Just that smokiness, that leathery, kind of slightly animalic touch. It has a challenging nature to it from a designer brand that at one point didn't cost a whole lot of money here. It has just this, this overwhelming, like sexy, uh, smoky, resinous strength about it. 
That smells amazing. I could sit and smell this all day. Now, one of the problems with this fragrance is the performance. We'll go ahead and cover that one now. Uh, this one here, it is an eau de toilette, which does kind of suck. I wish that they would have revamped this into an EDP or even a parfum. It always is sad to see as well because you know brands will have a winning DNA like this and they just kind of let it go. They've released many other fragrances and there are some great ones out there, Artisan Pure and all that stuff, but this really had some potential. And same with even Dark Rebel Rider. They could have beefed these up more. Instead of putting out something that's new, quote unquote new, that may be kind of generic leaning, focus on these DNAs which are amazing and give them some power. Now with that being said, longevity typically around six hours five, six hours. Not not great, really. I mean, at one point for the price, it was justifiable. Now it's a little bit harder to justify given that the prices are rising because it's no longer available, uh, no longer being made, discontinued. Uh, so that does kind of suck. Uh, for me, it's one where I just have to accept that and I just wear it if I'm hanging out around the house, wear it so I can smell it and enjoy it. And you know what? If I have to reapply during the day, if I'm not done smelling it yet, I'll do that. You would think that it would have more power given the uh, notes and all of that stuff, all of the heavy notes in here, but it just goes pretty quick. Quicker than you would like for sure, because it smells nice. Uh, projection's also on the softer side, uh, one where people would have to get closer to you to smell it. Now, I don't think that's all bad. I can live with that more than I can live with longevity issues, because you know the, the fix to projection is to apply more or, you know, I guess even just choose a different fragrance that projects more. For me, I'm not so much worried about that. It does leave a little bit of a trail, though it does dissipate. It could just be more of a personal scent, and sometimes that's not a bad thing. So overall, performance here on this one is not really the best, and that's been one of the main issues, and that's been common ever since the beginning with John Vervedo's fragrances, even ones like this that are super strong on paper. Now, compliment factor. Uh, this one, it does have that mysterious, smoky, masculine touch about it that would lend itself to being a good compliment getter. One of the main issues, though, that you can probably understand would be people have to smell you first. So my advice to you is don't buy this, obviously, for performance. Really don't even buy it for compliments because there are other things out there that are stronger that would just do better, right? We can all agree. For me, I kind of treat this as a niche fragrance, even though it's obviously not niche, <laughs> but uh, in terms of I just wear it for myself. I pick it up and I spray it on and I smell it because I want to smell it. I really am not trying to impress anyone. My girlfriend, I honestly, I don't even know what she thinks of this fragrance. I don't wear it all that often around her. She might like it, she might not, really don't care, sorry. Uh, but it's just, it's for me, you know, and I really like this one. It's a fragrance that introduced me to just some some amazing fragrances out there. When I was first starting out, I couldn't afford to spend a bunch of money on higher end designers and especially niche fragrances. I already touched on this a little bit, but the quality is fantastic, super smooth, opens up so nice and creamy and, and sweet. And again, I will say it again, smooth. There's nothing rough or rugged or synthetic or unnatural about this one. Uh, nice and boozy up top. It just, it's really quite remarkable stuff here. I also will say this, it's important to spray it on your skin, not just go off of the air or a tester strip because you get more of the smokiness, more of the animalic touches, more of the richness on skin. Up in the air, it is more fresh and bright and sweet. So I think that's gonna do it for me, guys. That is my final thoughts on Dark Rebel, just the original here. I'm not gonna be featuring it in videos going forward just because of the price again just not doesn't make any sense to do uh so that's kind of just me putting this one to rest here on the channel anyway I'm not gonna see it anymore dark rebel rider as far as i'm aware either it's not discontinued or there's a plenty of it out there to where it's more affordable a little bit more affordable but the prices have also gone up on that one so you know take that for which you will uh who knows but this one here especially it's time to uh say our goodbyes again if you want to pick up a backup bottle pick up one for yourself just to have a piece of history so to speak of a, a great fragrance here hit that link down below we'll take you right there the prices are going to continue to go up and like i said i can almost guarantee if it sells out and it were to come back it's gonna be ridiculously expensive. So this is kind of like your last call to get a bottle or a backup bottle. eBay prices are no better and they're gonna to continue to climb as well. Let me know what you think of this one down below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What is your favorite from John Varvatos? I think that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.